This is a new avoidance game, much like the last game, but instead of going up to down, we're going left to right, which means we're going to change the code a little bit. Um, we're going to remove the cat, scratch sprite, and let's begin. Okay, I've got a simple black background, a few yellow dots for stars. Give it a title, Invasion Force 5000. Say who you are, put it into position. Now we can change this later, it's not essential, but you need to make sure that you put them in to start with, that you name them all clearly, and once you've finished making the game, you can go back and make it a little bit more pretty. I've started with the levels, level one, click duplicate, 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 and it names it level one, two, three. Just so you know during the game what's happening, name them. Okay, now code. First of all, when flag is clicked, switch to, I haven't named it, here we go, start screen. When flag is clicked, switch to start screen. First basic bit of code. Now I'm going to create my sprite. This will be my start button. Again, simple black oval, the word start inside, and I move it to the start position. We can change the aesthetics of this one later on, but just a simple sprite to start with. When the flag is clicked, like all sprites, we want it to hide. And there's the coordinates. Events, when the sprite is clicked, and when the backdrop switches to start screen. On start screen it will always show. We can move the coordinates down there. When the sprite is clicked, we want it to hide, and we want it to switch backdrop to level one. And like always, we have started a new code, so test that code, and that's working really well. Okay, now I've got a new sprite, and this is going to be my main character. It's just a very simple geometric shape, which will be something a bit like a Space Invaders machine. Please forgive me for it not really looking like one. So now I've got my two sprites, I've got my start, and I've got my spaceship, and I need to name them. Okay, click on the little I, and name your sprites. Really important. And also don't forget to name your game. It's always handy when people know what the game you're playing is called. Now I'm going to make my next sprite, which is what we will be avoiding. So click on the paintbrush, zoom in close, and this will just be an asteroid. Nice and simple, a couple of basic colors. Does not have to be a Picasso. Now we can start coding our sprites. So when flag clicked hide, and let's just have our secondary sprite here. And I'm going to make a bit of a flaming comet ball. It's a little bit prettier than the last one, I think. I'm not really too sure. Okay, now code-wise, first of all, we need to, when flag is clicked, hide. Just drag that over the other sprites and it will hold in place. Now we need to tell the sprites when they should appear. So when backdrop switches to level one, we want it to show. Again, drag it onto the other two sprites. The flaming ball will appear on backdrop two. Okay, now here we've got some, a little bit more complicated code coming in. Now our spaceship will go left to right, so we need to set the Y, which is the left to right, and let's set it to minus 140, which is down at the bottom of the screen. Now we're going to use a repeating tool, and let's get an operation OR, and we've got two sensing. One will be for the asteroid, and one will be for the flaming ball. So until that happens, we're going to set X to, and we're going to make it move. So the X will be to mouse X. So now we test it, you'll see that our sprite will move as we move the mouse. So that's working successfully, and if it does touch either of the other sprites, the game will stop all. We need to get our other sprites to move. Okay, let's first start with the asteroid. I want the asteroid to move down. So repeat until, again, touching the spaceship. When moving sprites from the top to the bottom, it's the Y which we want to change. We want to start with a Y at about 160, which is the top, and then it's going to go down to minus 160 at the bottom. We're moving at a minus 5, which is just a gentle move. 
down the screen. Now we're saying if the Y position gets down to minus 160, which is at the bottom of the screen, we want it to reset to the top of the page. So here we're saying go to 160 and 160, which is at the top left hand corner of the page. But also we can use a random number generator. If we choose, pick a random between 160 and minus 160, the sprite will reappear anywhere along the top of the screen. Now we've said change by minus 5. We need a variable instead in this game and click and create speed. So here we'll say change y by speed and go back to the script for the backdrop. And so when flag is clicked, let's set speed to minus 5. That means we can change it later on if we want to. So for example, if I change the speed to minus 20 and we click start, you see how fast the sprite is moving. Now that's more advanced, but we'll just start with minus 5. So here's the code on the asteroid. I'm going to cheat and just drag that block onto the flaming ball. And I just need to change flaming ball to appear on level 2. So now I've got two sprites, the asteroid for level 1, flaming ball for level 2. Now I'm going to put in a forever loop. And if then, within that, I'm going to create another variable called score. This means we can set the score every time the asteroid appears to the top, we'll get an extra point. So I'm going to say, if the score is now greater than 10, I want my backdrop to switch to level 2. Let's test it out. Whoops, let's try it again. Because in order for the score to change, I need to tell it to. So now, every time the Y position is minus 160, change score by one. You can see just off the screen the score is going up. If the score reaches 10, we're going to jump to level 2. Let's just duplicate that little if-then loop. And say if the score is more than 15 or more than 20, it's going to change to the speed will increase. So now the speed is set to 7 and let's move to level 2. And that's how we add levels and make it progressively harder as we're playing. Now final step of this game is to take level 3 and to make that the final screen of the game. So I'm going to add a bit more text and say winner, you have survived the asteroid or something like that. Something which is a bit of a storyline to let you know that you have won the game. And then on my home screen, the script for the backdrops will just say when score is 20, 30, 40, 50, whatever score you choose, it will switch to winner and end the game. And that's how we have our game from start to finish. The last job for you now is to make sure the script works test failing, test succeeding, test doing the right thing, test doing the wrong thing, and go and complete your project page, and you are done. If you want to make it look a little bit better, you can change your sprites using flaming text. You can add more sprites to each page, making it harder. Really, it's up to you how far you want to take this. But what we've got now is exactly what you need to do. Good luck.